Welcome to the Shadow MPC for Yorkshire, a partnership between Recognition PR, Clive Owen and the York Press. The European Central Bank last week raised interest rates to an all-time high in a bid to cool consumer prices, but inflation in the UK, while way ahead of target, is falling. Unemployment is on the rise though, and include issues like Wilco and Tata that won't ease concerns too much. Better news for people in work, as total pay including bonuses rose by 8.5% in the year to May-July uh, quarter. This was helped by one-off bonuses to NHS staff and civil service workers this summer. There was good news for pensioners because the earnings figure is used to set the rise in state pension that comes in next April. And the earnings figure, as you heard, was quite high. But what does all this data mean for interest rates? Let's see if the members of the Yorkshire Shadow MPC think a further rise would be a good idea for the regional economy and how their own sectors are doing, or if they think that maybe caution is the way forward. We're going to start with Gary Smith. Where's Gary? You're from Evelyn and Partners. Just give your own little dipstick thought on how business is doing in the economy. Well, the last quarter has been tough. Um, inflation has been stickier than expected. The pressure of rising interest rates and central banks getting the balance right has had definitely had an impact on global asset values with most stock exchanges and fixed interest securities such as gilts falling during the quarter. So there's definitely been pressure there. However, we are seeing some green shoots. So employment data in America came in lower than expected last week, which is good because that takes the pressure off the Federal Reserve, the central bank in America, to raise interest rates and they're currently in a pause program. We do expect that interest rates will probably increase at least one further in the UK, but we are definitely seeing the bite of mortgage interest rates now. So anecdotally, I'm aware of somebody whose fixed rate has come to an end and their mortgage payments have gone up £750 per month. And the Bank of England current estimate that as these fixed rates come to an, uh, an end, the average monthly increase will be £500 a month. And obviously that is going to suck a lot of wealth out of the economy. So we are seeing clients who are taking withdrawals to repay debt or grandparents and parents who are taking withdrawals to assist their uh, children or grandchildren paying off debt to make things affordable because um, you know these significant increases are going to have an impact on their ability to service uh, mortgage costs um, as well as we are still seeing fuel rising um, and also energy bills are likely to go up again during the winter so there continues to be a pressure on people's spending ability and the rate rises are now starting to feel uh, to work as uh, mortgage rates come off their fixed rates. Now, of course, if there are two quarters of negative growth or growth goes shrinks, then that means it's technically a recession. And uh, looking yes. at the growth figures for the month of July, that the, the actually shrank by half a percent. That's only one month, and, but it wasn't mm -hmm. particularly good the month before. So it's possible that the summer quarter of 2023 will be in negative territory. And if yep. continuing interest rates and rises in interest rates have the kind of effect you've alluded to, does that make a risk that the last quarter of 2023 is negative, technically entering a recession? Absolutely, and this is one of the concerns the markets have had. It's that balance between central banks raising interest rates but not raising them too much where you can trigger a recession. And I'm sure when Dave speaks after me later on, he'll be able to give a much uh, clearer indication of what's happening from an insolvency perspective but I would I wouldn't be surprised if we do get a technical recession but hopefully only a shallow one and we start to get some growth next year because the Bank of England have indicated that they will reduce interest rates when uh, to stimulate growth if required. Okay thank you let's move to Philippa Samington from uh, Clive Owen our partners in this. Uh, Philippa you looking after lots of SME businesses uh, what are they saying what are you seeing the, the trend is about the economy how is it affecting them if at all? Well, it, it, it's definitely having an impact. I think um, the latest trends that we've started seeing is in stock levels. So prior to things like um, COVID and Brexit and the war in Russia and Ukraine, and those those led to much higher stock levels. People wanted to make sure that they could, um, you know, service 
the, or have the stock available. And also it was also to um, mitigate against stock prices. Whereas at the moment, we're seeing that people are starting to rationalize. So whereas previously we might have seen a large number of different ranges or products on hand, they're becoming quite a lot more streamlined. Um, stock levels are reducing again. Um, and, and that is, I think, just a sign of people trying to cut. They've cut costs. So the expenses line items have come down. So now they are focusing on the next step, which is minimizing stock levels, product ranges, um, and linked in with what Gary was saying uh, just before me. Um, we're also picking up the people, the general noise in the office, if I can put it like that, is, uh, you know, people are concerned. They've, say, they've spent their savings now. And I think that that is also going to be seen more and more where people have relied up to this point on their savings accounts, and those have now either diminished or just not there anymore. Okay. So the extra costs have to come from somewhere. Thank you, Philippa. Let's move on to Paul Robbins from Barterline. Remind everyone what your business does, Paul, and tell us what your assessment is. Yeah, hi there. Um, yeah, so we're uh, we're a, a typical SME manufacturing business uh, supplying decorative coatings type products to pretty much every high street uh, every high street retail outlet and also the professional side and builders, merchants, et cetera. So we kind of, uh, we, we, we see impacts on both sectors really, uh, both uh, in construction output, but also I think um, as uh, colleagues on the call have alluded to the, the slowdown in, in retail and the footfall has been, I would say bumpy to say the least this year. So uh, we, we, we've, seen a slight recovery uh, there are green shoots out there but um the expected decreasing raw material costs hasn't really materialized in the business yet um nor has if you also see i think the latest oil price have gone above 90 dollars in the past week or so and again that's that's putting additional strain on on purchases and and the economy and of course the cost of living crisis we we see it immediately when you're in in in, in the pumps and the garage filling up uh, petrol so i i would say that uh the overall target for the bank of england to be at two percent seems a bit of a stretch so uh, yeah it's going to be uh, a continued bumpy uh, second half of the year uh, that's what we're expecting at the moment thank you very much paul uh, let's go to dave Bo broadbent uh, from begbie's trainer remind us what you do and what your t d dipstick into the economy you're seeing is uh yeah good morning everybody um yeah the, it, it, we are a, a national firm of insolvency practitioners i look after the uh, north yorkshire and teesside area for the firm um unfortunately it's echoing what everybody said um we've uh, we've continued to see an increase in number of, of, of insolvencies for small limited companies, small businesses. Uh, main reason for, for businesses struggling at the moment is is cash, uh, people just running out of it. Um, either that or drop in turnover. And if not that, it's unfortunately what I what I continue to call the COVID hangover, which is uh, people still trying to maintain repayments on borrowings that we took three years ago. Um, unfortunately, you've got the perfect storm whereby the repayments on those uh, on those bonds that they took some time ago have now started to bite which is hit with the reducing turnover that people are experiencing at the same time and similar to what paul was alluding to as well um businesses struggling still to get to, to get hold of supplies and, and supplies that they can get are, are much more expensive than previously um in addition to, to looking after the local region i also deal with a lot of the internet referral base that comes through as well so it, it is geographic um we are seeing pretty much the whole of the UK. The small businesses are, are just generally struggling at this moment in time. And I think, unfortunately, all we can see really is with an increasing cost base, increasing overheads going forward for the next six months, it's, it's not going to be a brilliant winter, unfortunately. Dave, it, it's not always right that politicians and people at banks are urged to just do nothing. But if they did nothing, if the government stopped taking action to put spending up massively, if it stopped putting taxes up, and if the bank stopped putting interest rates up, is your sense that the economy would start to take care of itself? Or do the government and the bank need to actually do something? 
Yeah, it's a difficult one, really, because I think I think just coming back to the government, I think I think what they've now started to do is is, is start to recover a recover debt that's owing to the UK PLC. Um, for the first time in probably the last two or three years, I've started to see petitions being issued by the government to recover a debt that's owing. So if you call that a way in which they're trying to deal with it a, 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 a way, then then yes, they are. I think the problem that generally happens is, is when I'm sat down with, with, with directors of, of companies or individuals, the sole traders, the problem that you always say is, well, there's only so much that we can actually, or that you can actually control. Um, a lot of it is, is out of their hands and, and demand is just something that irrespective of what the government do, I just don't think it's going to be there for some time. P- people are, are doing the proverbial bat- batten down the hatches for, for the next six months. People are concerned. They're, they're looking at their own cost, personal cost base. Um, what, what's everybody's electricity going to be, bill going to be? A lot of people might have two or three um, investment properties that historically provided them with an income stream that uh, allowed them to cover their own overheads. That is all diminishing at this moment in time. So, so yeah, it's uh, the government doing has certainly doing something could, about could it. Could exacibate it, couldn't it? Yeah, correct. Yeah. All right. Look, a good overview. Thank you very much. Let's move on to the next person. If you don't mind, we'll talk to Richard Peak from Helmsley Group, uh, property uh, very much at the front and centre. Richard, how's it looking? Uh, it's still a golden triangle of uh, Yorkshire where you operate. What, what's the general feel? It, it is. Uh, to be fair, um, it's always very difficult following on from Gary and Dave and these things. They say so pretty much most of what we were going to say before. Um, it, it, it's been very quiet uh, over the last quarter. Um, it, you can't blame just the summer break for that. That, that there is uncertainty in the market. Uh, the interest rate rises uh, it are undoubtedly affecting uh, whether um, house buyers are looking to move forward with, with new purchases. They just don't want to be saddled with the additional debt that they uh, uh, could have. Um, you are right, though. Um, York uh, is very fortunate in that it is a little bit of a bubble in terms of its property market. So we are still seeing uh, sales at the lower end of the market on the starter unit side of things, where it's perhaps slightly more affordable, but certainly at the higher end, um, people aren't just looking to sort of uh, you know scale up and take on additional mortgage debt at the moment. Uh, um, the other bit of the business that, that we look at is, is we do lend money to, uh, to, to small developers as well. And uh, I'm seeing um, quite an influx of different inquiries coming in from finance brokers across the country now where uh, a lot of the, um, the other um, tertiary bridging funders and high street lenders uh, are, aren't looking to renew facilities or are getting close to current loan expiries and aren't willing to sort of work with the borrowers just simply want paying back so a number of inquiries coming through at the moment are looking for us uh, and other people like our companies to, uh, to sort of step in to allow borrowers to finish projects that they're involved with so, and that, that's been a real sort of change we've not seen that uh, for quite some time in terms of the sort of the, the lender appetite is is very very selective at the moment and, and you can probably understand it uh, uh, you know it is an uncertain time for the property market at the moment um, if they can get repaid uh, rather than taking on additional sort of a, a, a sort of risk at the moment then then Perhaps they will do, but uh, yeah, this is going to be a very difficult winter, I think, moving forward. It's, uh, I can't see any sort of a, a, a early sort of a uh, sort of good news on the horizon, unfortunately. All right, Richard, you provide a good segue to our next guest, first time on the Shadow NPC for Yorkshire, Christopher White, who's at Ecology Building Society. Now you're lending to the general public, I suppose, Chris. What what's the uh, appetite like for uh, people? F- is there a demand for people to borrow? Have people just got frightened and is demand stemmed what what's the situation yeah thanks thanks graham so the ecology building society predominantly lends into kind of self-build and sustainable uh, lending and, and obviously that is an area where demand is is very high at the moment with people looking to to make more sustainable housing so so we certainly see demand but recognize that as being uh, a more niche area than the uh, wider mortgage market i think uh, um I'd go back to the kind of point that I think it was Gary made before around the fact that in the mortgage market we're seeing quite a bit of um, change at the moment. I think we've seen the end of an emergence period where people that have uh, been able to afford debt in kind of a long period where debt's been quite cheap are coming out of that and seeing quite significant impacts. Um, and, and I guess I think that that kind of ties through to where 
the bank base rate and where the MPC should be that we are seeing quite a few of the, you know, quite a few of my colleagues on the call have said they're starting to see some of the impact of rates going up. I and mean, there's definitely a feel for me that we're coming out of those emerge that emergence period of some of those impacts uh, taking hold. Um, and I think that people coming off fixed rate mortgage deals and seeing their rates increase and therefore their spending power in, in the wider economy reducing is a really good example of that. Uh, Chris, I've got to ask about the other side of the coin, your building society. What about savings rates? I noticed that right out there at the top of the tree appears to be national savings on the guaranteed growth bond. I saw it was 6.2% sucking money in. Th that must affect small lenders and because it, it's the government itself uh, setting a bar for interest rates. Are you doing anything to help your uh, borrowers? Uh, yes, yeah, so so I think firstly I'd say that after you know, a lot of my career kind of working uh, within building societies has been a time where the rate that the market and societies have been able to provide to people has been has been really low. So one of the benefits of bank base rate coming up over the last eighteen months has been the ability for financial institutions to offer a more sustainable rate to uh, to their savers, and I think it's really positive uh, outcome to be able to see those rates uh, come up. Uh, you're, you're right that the the impact of NSNI kind of offering high rates into the market has a, a market-wide impact that obviously the volume of savers that they can uh, provide a product to is, is really large and we obviously have to uh, adjust our rates and compete to those to make sure that we're ob obviously able to provide a, a co competitive uh, product against that uh, within the market. Again, um, as I mentioned with the mortgage products at Ecology Building Society, we, we offer a slightly niche um, or, or different uh, product in that area where the products that we uh, provide to savers are, are generally aimed at kind of ethical and sustainable support uh, products. All right, thank you very much. Let's go to Louise Scott from Castle Employment. We haven't mentioned unemployment much. It went up last month and vacancies uh, stabilised and the number of people uh, who are in employment went down a smidge. But what, what's your sense on the employment markets and the effect of all this on them? Yeah, I think um, you're right in terms of the stats. We've seen quite um, a challenging quarter three really across the board. I think employers have been a little bit more cautious, um, like other people on the panel have been saying, you know, battening down the hatches, just seeing how things pan out. Um, it's starting to pick up a little bit more now in terms of job vacancies. They've started to go up a little bit um, in August and into September. Um, but still, despite the redundancies that we're seeing coming through now, um, obviously quite high profile ones in terms of Wilco and some of the construction and manufacturing sectors as well have been impacted. There's still a candidate shortage so it's getting the right skill sets to match with the vacancies. So we're still seeing um, some scarcity in, in some of the highly skilled candidates that um, some of the employers within the region look for. OK, uh, let's move on. Thank you very much. We're going to ask you about your view on interest rates in a moment. It's coming up after we talk to the last three people. Uh, we've got uh, Jill next from GSM Group. Remind us what you manufacture and, and where the economy is for you. Hi, thanks for that. Um, yeah, GSM manufacture um, sheet metal um, and highly durable label systems. Um, we have seen a really sharp decline in our order intake. So I think that's mirroring what's in the press at the moment. I think manufacturing, if you if if you stripped out away from the service sector, we would definitely be showing a recession. The data uh, didn't show that, about... though, actually, Jill, did it? Actually, when they looked at the growth figures in July, manufacturing had stepped up, but I think that was automotive having a disproportionate effect. It was the car sector, yeah. So, uh, it, again, you've got to strip out automotive. The mm. rest of us are really struggling. The order intake's about 15% down at the moment, mm. uh, so we're having to make some redundancies. Mm. Um, we are finding, though, that the availability of skilled staff is more plentiful, um, and and the rates of pay in which people are expecting have come down. They're more realistic now um, as people are fearing for their livelihoods a little bit more. But yeah, it's very tough business. 
Well, thank you very much. Very good insight. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Bob Gammy uh, from Dean of York, uh, Bus Dean of the York Business School. Bob, thank you for joining us. Where are you? There you are. Tell us uh, what your overall take is. You're talking to people who are going to enter business and people who are, are in business. What are they saying? It's a really interesting situation. Um, I'm from Aberdeen and I've just been up there on a week's holiday, not the place that everybody goes for uh, their, their vacations. I, I can appreciate that. Um, biggest thing there is price of oil and it was mentioned earlier on um, today as, as well and there's the price of oil um, increases and you know some talk of hundred dollars a barrel and if that's if that's going to come to fruition um, things are going to be tricky around about inflation um, as as well and it, it's interesting in, in, in our business here we, we were not we're not strictly governed by what happens um, Round about um, um, things like interest rates, but what we see is the biggest issue for the moment as as our student numbers have gone up and our international students have gone up is um, places to stay in York. Um, the cost of the cost of rental accommodation in York has has um, significantly increased, and that's a barrier, but it's not an insurmountable barrier as, as students go and live um, elsewhere. So. It's a difficult situation. I think everybody's described a very difficult situation. It's a very complex um, situation as as well. Um, well, it's helpful you mention the price of oil because uh, you are right, it's going up and up. But it is a, it's actually something that's going up by deliberate international policy, isn't it? And uh, uh, it, it's about uh, restraining supply by uh, OPEC and Russia. Uh, I suppose if the licenses to drill oil are granted and we can get some more sea, more North Sea oil, we can have an effect on the market, albeit a small one. Yeah, that's that's not a short term fix, though, isn't it? A license to, to drill oil then takes in several several um, years for that to actually come through to it actually being in, in the pumps. Um, I see, as you say, it is a deliberate policy to reduce the amount of barrels that are being um, delivered um, each day. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon, and I don't see um, the price of the barrel of oil fluctuating terribly. And the demand uh, the, for oil the hasn't gone months. down really, has it, when you look at the Chinese and Indian economies that are motoring ahead? Absolutely, particularly China, and the demand there is, is significantly increased just recently. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to our last contributor partner in this, uh, Steve Lowe from uh, Local IQ, and that's uh, NewsQuest. Where's Steve? Let's bring him in. How's advertising in the local news media. That's always a good dipstick uh, for what's happening in the economy. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Well, I think we can reflect on what everyone else has said, really. Um, our property customers, for the first time in a number of years, are finding property sticking. Um, and so that's creating a, a new challenge for them. The motor sector is continues to be a bit tough. And the high street is a bit tough at the, as tough at the moment. And what we find from an advertising perspective is that we've got customers that are moving from um, awareness and branding spend into direct lead generation where they're, they're having extra money to spend on the top end of the marketing funnel is being directed into stuff to generate leads because they can't afford to, to, to waste any marketing spend. So a lot more digital spend coming our way um, and a lot less in what your class is, the brand advertising. So yeah, bit, bit different, big challenging from, for the York Press. Um, we're about okay. We're online with last year. Our customer count's about the same, um, but it's not growing. I mean, we would expect our customers to go, you know, coming out of COVID, we would be, ex we would be looking for small incremental growth of customers coming to us and spending with us, but we're not. We're sticking on where we were this time last year. Steve, thank you. Right, we're going to the vote, what our panel think the uh, interest rate should be. But before we get in there, and please, if anyone wants to comment before we go to the vote, if uh, the Bank of England this week puts up interest rates, it would be the 15th increase in a row. The other thing is, no one on our panel knows what the Bank of England will know, which is what the inflation figure is uh, this month. It's being announced on Wednesday. We're recording this on the Monday. But there are some people that think it might trip up because alcohol duty went up and petrol prices have gone up. So it might bip a bit uh, on that. Uh, the other thing is that uh, wage growth is significant. But when you strip out the bonuses, it's 7.8%. Uh, so it's not unadjacent to uh, inflation. It's a bit more, but not, not the 8.5% headline if you strip uh, the bonuses out. And also, uh, 
you've got our international competitors, the Federal Reserve pausing interest rates in America deliberately, but the European uh, uh, Central Bank putting them up. So it's difficult to know where the international markets are. There was a very interesting comment by a journalist in the Sunday Times this week who said if the bank does put interest rates up and subsequently the economy falls more, it will look like it pushed a drowning man underwater, which I thought was quite interesting. Does anyone have any one last thing to say before we go to the vote? Graham, I was just going to comment on the inflation. I read the same article and I thought it was um, a, a good analogy. Um, but I think on inflation, I think the timing of inflation on Wednesday and the expectation that it may tip up a bit is is potentially unhelpful and may fuel the dubs among the MPC to react when it's maybe unnecessary without giving my vote away too much. <laughs> um, particularly, um, I think, given the expectation... OK, you've just frozen, so we'll go back to... Is there anyone else? Chris froze, but I think he's going to be a hold. Inflation... That will actually start to reduce quite significantly. I think we heard him. Graham, just just one thing: Gary. the analysts, the markets are forecasting inflation will be six point seven percent, and that the Bank of England will raise interest rates by 0.25 on Thursday. That that is what the markets anticipate. Very interesting. Okay, so remember the rules of our shadow MPCs: you don't vote for what you predict will happen; you vote for what you would do. If you had a vote, it's a shadow MPC, it's not a prediction game. So, first question is, hands up if you think you would want to cut interest rates. No takers. Next, hands up if you think that the next rate rise should be a quarter point or more. No takers. One taker. One. Uh, hands up if you think that the Bank of England should have a pause in interest rate rises and do nothing. Uh, an overwhelming majority. Did Chris abstain? I didn't see your vote, Chris. All oh, right, okay. So it was an overwhelming majority for a pause in interest rate rises. Well, thank you very much. That's a very interesting discussion. Thanks everyone for sharing. Uh, let's see what happens and see you again next time.